Welcome to Your Daily Dose, a devotion ministry of the Faith Baptist Church of Franklin and Middletown, Ohio. Thanks for joining us each weekday as we share God's Word with you. It's your daily prescription for all that ails you. And now, Your Daily Dose. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Your Daily Dose. I'm Bob Nolan. Glad to have you here with us this morning. Thank you for spending a few moments of your day here. Um, And uh, as normal, uh, I think I'm going to start with a good story about Brother Doug. Uh, we were talking yesterday, and we were we were there at the church. We were looking out at the the snow that's still laying on the ground from our recent snowfall. And he was telling me that back when he was a uh, younger man, uh, wasn't too long after he got his driver's license. He'd have been around 16 years old. He was out driving one day, and it started snowing. And next thing you know, he found himself caught in a blizzard. And the snow was so bad, it was blowing so hard that he got lost. Now, he could have panicked, but he didn't because he remembered something that uh, his dad once told him. You see, his dad told him, said, son, if you ever get stuck in a a snowstorm, just wait for a snowplow to come along and then follow the snowplow. Well, you know, Doug pulled off to the side. As he was waiting, he... uh, Next thing, you know, he looks out his mirror and he sees lights coming and he realizes it's a snowplow. He's like, man, I'm in luck. This is great. And as the snowplow passed him, he started to follow it. Well, you know, about 45 minutes later, here he is. He's still following that snowplow. After a little bit longer, the driver of the truck got out. He uh, walked back to Doug's car, tapped on his window. Doug rolled down the window and uh, he said, what are you doing? And so he explained to the truck driver, said, you know, my dad told me to do this if I ever got lost, just follow a snowplow. And the driver said, well, you know, when I'm done with the Kroger parking lot, you want to follow me over to Sears now? Now, having said that, um, part of the reason I'm I'm doing this devotion is last night, uh, just before church, um, Brother Jeff had just gotten there and I walked in right behind him and uh, there was some snow that needed to be moved, couldn't find snow shovels and different things. And we got to talking about the snow a few minutes later. And, uh, of course, you know, Brother Jeff was just uh, down in, in, in sunny South Florida last week. And, well, uh, let's just say he's having a hard time adjusting from short pants and 70 and 80 degree weather to jumping on a plane three hours later, getting out to this frozen tundra we call Southwest Ohio. But uh, I said something and he took great exception to it. And I, it was just a casual comment. I said, well, well, yeah, we got, a, we got a really good snow. Brother Jeff gave me kind of a sideways glance and very emphatically said, now, Bob, I hate to disagree with you, which I wouldn't say that's true because Brother Jeff and I love to disagree with each other all the time. I think we've actually made a sport out of it. He said, but there's absolutely positively no such thing as good snow. (laughs) Now, you know, admittedly, I have a great love for snow. Uh, And before you think that that just, you know, kind of makes me totally weird, um, I'm not telling you that I love shoveling it. I I don't like driving in it. I will. I mean, I have no problem with it, but it's, I prefer to drive on clear roads. Uh, In fact, in the, the blizzard we had on Christmas Eve in 2004, uh, we had so much snow drop that I let the snowplow driver pile it all up on the curb in front of my house in the cul-de-sac because I was going to be out of town for two weeks. <laughs> Joke was on me because it didn't melt until March 10th. But I love snow for several reasons. I'm going to share a couple of them with you first. Is that it is clean. Scientists tell us that the single whitest of white natural substances that exist on this planet is snow. There's nothing else that compares to the whiteness, the cleanness of snow. Is it then any wonder that when we decide to tell someone just how just how white something is, what do we do? We tell them it's whiter than snow. Now, we'll skip the context behind this verse for the sake of time today because I want you to be able to get on with your life this morning. But Mark chapter 9, verse 3 says, His raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow. There's that comparison. So as no fuller on earth can white them. 
snow is so white, so clean, that there's no amount of bleach that you can apply to something that could make anything any whiter appear, honestly, any cleaner. Snow is clean. Now, secondly, it's consistent. When it comes to snow, when it starts to fall, there's absolutely no doubt about what it is. And what I mean by that is uh, we know when we see it, we know a few things about it. First, uh, it's cold. Second, it's wet. Uh, when you shovel it, you notice that it's heavy. Uh, when it starts falling, and this is probably why Brother Tony doesn't like it so much, is that it has to be shoveled. It needs to be dealt with in some way. When we see snow fall, some of us just see work. But you know, on the flip side, it can even be fun. Hey, you can go make snow angels. Uh, I make I make snow blobs. I don't make snow angels. You can go sledding. You can go skiing. There's all kinds of crazy things you can do. Of course, unless you're Brother Tony, because he's made it very clear he has no use for it. But the interesting thing to me there is that the fact remains that snow is consistent. It's always the same when it falls. The same actions have to be taken when, once it falls to manage it. And even though each flake is unique, it's amazing when, when you think about that, how many snowflakes fall, and people believe that there's no supreme being, no supreme creator behind all of this mess. But that's what makes it snow. Proverbs 25, verse 13 says, As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that sent him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. One thing you can say about snow for sure is that it's consistent. And lastly, snow is capable. Isaiah chapter uh, 55, I, think, I didn't write that down, I think it's verse 10, says, As for the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now, I've been picking on Brother Jeff and Brother Tony a lot uh, throughout this. Now, those two, when they look out their window, they may not relish looking out that window and seeing the snow. In fact, I love how every time it snows, Brother Tony turns on a, his uh, outdoor camera, takes a picture of it, and posts it to Facebook. Now, I love the pictures, but he does it from a point of disdain. But the waters that fall from heaven are there on purpose. And they're so very capable of so many things. I mean, just, just on the outskirt, uh, it, it waters the earth. It makes the plants, uh, trees, and the flowers bud. The, the freeze and the cold of winter is what restarts the growth cycle on plants. Without having that winter, without that snow, spring is pretty bland. I can tell you I lived in Louisiana long enough to know you don't have a winter. You don't have a spring. There's no spring flowers down there. It, it's pretty much just the same year round. One of the things I really like about the snow, and uh, I did something similar to this at the prayer breakfast, uh, the, the men's uh, prayer breakfast Bible study last Saturday, but one of the things that I really like about snow is how capable it is of making otherwise not so pretty things look so beautiful. Uh, you know, when I do a lot of the graphic work at the church and different things, I, I, I'm often during the winter time. I love the landscapes of snow and pictures. And uh, there's out there somewhere. If, if I could have found it, I would have put it up on the screen for you to see. There's a picture that somebody took in the middle of summer of a farm, and then they took a picture in February when the place was covered with snow. And in the in the picture in the summertime, you see fencing that's all broken down, laying down on the ground all over the place. Broken down tractors scattered here and there. Broken down truck on blocks over here. Pigsty over there. But when the snow falls, all that freshly fallen snow piles up on everything, makes it into a beautiful landscape. Something so simple as snow, yet it's so very capable. Now, you may have noticed that, uh, unlike normal, I didn't open today with a specific text. And there's a reason. That's because... <coughs> Excuse me, I needed to set all of this up to get to this. Probably my single favorite verse of scripture, and, and of course, 
if you're keeping track of all of those, because I say that quite often, um, there's a lot of them, but this one really has such a poignancy that if nothing else you glean from Scripture, this is something that you can take to the bank and hold on to for the rest of your life, which is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 8. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So why do I like snow? <laughs> Probably because of that verse right there. My sins, actually overriding that, my sin nature, by the way, we, we were condemned long before we were ever actually sinned. I, we were condemned, we were damned to a, a eternal life in hell, as Romans chapter 1 and verse 2, long before we personally were even born or even committed our first sin. But to me, when I look out and I see that snow, to me what it is, it's a beautiful picture of God's redeeming grace. Just as that snow takes that ugly old farm and turns it into a beautiful landscape, though our sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Interestingly enough, science also tells us that there's nothing redder than blood, but there's nothing whiter than snow. It's only the blood of Jesus Christ that no doubt while he was being beaten and tortured and crucified on the cross, that blood indelibly stained his garment. But that same blood can wash me as white as snow. <laughs> Praise God. Next time when you look out that window, when you see that freshly fallen snow, don't look at it from the perspective of the work that it causes and the, the uproar to your life. Look at that and remember that that is the closest picture we will ever see this side of heaven to the power of the grace of an almighty God. So clean, so consistent, so capable. <laughs> what a picture that gives us. I hope that's been a blessing to you. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Look forward to seeing you in God's house again Sunday morning. This has Thank been your Daily Dose, a ministry of Faith Baptist Church. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today and click the bell next to the button to sign up for email notifications each time we live stream or release a new video. To learn more about faith, please visit our website, fitinatfaith.com, for more information about our church. Have a great day in the Lord.